There you have it. The W14 has finally seen the daylight. This is the car that has the most weight on its shoulders compared to all of the cars on the grid because it's a Mercedes that we're talking about. The Brackley-based squad has so much pressure on them to perform like they did until the 2021 season, and the W13 did everything but that. The first impressions are that Mercedes can definitely win the championship in 2023, but what kind of competition will they face? And what is different about the new version of the car compared to last year? Lastly, who will be the number one driver at Mercedes? All of this is answered in our video, so make sure to stay tuned. 2022 has been the most disastrous season for Mercedes ever since they re-entered the sport in 2010, with them winning only one race. What's even more hurtful for them is that Hamilton had the first winless season of his career, finishing career low at P6 in the Drivers' Championship. Russell has shown that he can definitely bear the burden of being the number one choice for Mercedes, and that has been well recognized by the Brackley-based squad. But we'll get to that later in this video, because in order for Russell to be the number one driver ahead of a seven-time world champion, he needs to have a championship-winning car. Mercedes have failed massively to capitalize on the 2022 regulations, and now they are trying to bring themselves back into contention, as they hope that a couple of tweaks in the regulations will propel them back to the top. It's going to be much easier said than done, but Mercedes has definitely put in the extra hours of work to complete this milestone. It's worth noting that the staff has worked tirelessly to develop the 2014, which will be delayed at the start of the season due to a lack of parts. And note to editor, I think 2014 is supposed to be W14, so I'll read that both ways. It's worth noting that the staff has worked tirelessly to develop the W14, which will be delayed at the start of the season due to a lack of parts. While this isn't good news for Mercedes and their fans, the team has a brand new DNA that will be incorporated into the same philosophy of work, the no-pod side-pod design. The team has put so much work into making it work with this design, once considered innovative and championship winning, that now it's not debatable for them to go and pick the double floor design of the side pods, once that has been implemented by Red Bull for the RB18. The new regulations increase the floor side by 15 millimeters and the diffuser throat by 10 millimeters, and the floor's flexion will be prohibited by law. This is something that Mercedes was very vocal about in the 2022 season. And while they thought that they would be much more competitive once it was implemented from Spa, it turned out that they were the team to have lost the most advantage once the flexion was limited. With the increased ride height and the floor's flexion being inhibited, it means that the bottom of the cars needs to be made out of a thicker material so that it will withstand the pressure of the air without bending from it. This is definitely something that has been figured out for the W14 with them also incorporating changes in the rear of the car as it's now less tapered. This has been done for two reasons, the first being to interact with the phenomenon of porpoising, which is basically a structural reason due to the fact that the large open floor space at the bottom of the W13 was particularly flexible. The second reason, however, is very useful from an aerodynamic standpoint, and now that there is a flat section at the level of the rear suspension, the car will create a T-shape at the rear to increase the efficiency of the diffuser by exploiting the beam wing. One thing that we need to pay more attention to is Mercedes' weight. With the initial reports saying that the W14 has been able to shed as much as 12 kilos compared to its predecessor. If this turns out to be the truth, then the W14 will be 5 kilos under weight, with the weight limit still remaining at 798 kilos after the initial reports of the limit being dropped down by 2 kilos to 796 kilos have not been voted for. If there is one thing that Mercedes can definitely be proud of, that's the reliability of their engine. However, once Ferrari and Red Bull figured out the reliability issues of their own engines, there's only so much that a reliable engine can do for you. In the second half of the season, Mercedes seemed to have found the perfect solution in order to extract the most power out of the engine that seemed to have been the slowest compared to Ferrari and Red Bull. And just when you think that this is it and Mercedes cannot push for more, reports are coming from the team that the W14 engine has been empowered by 10 base horsepower. Numbers like this are always to be taken into question, mostly because Vasur has shattered the claims that the SF23 will have an engine that's 30 horsepower more powerful compared to the F175. 
But if there's one thing that we've learned from the Mercedes W14 launch, it's the fact that the team has made an effort to optimize the combustion in collaboration with Petronas, which also went on to improve the consumption efficiency thanks to a new formulation of the fuel. The W14 has been fired the earliest compared to its fiercest rivals, and now it seems like the car is definitely a masterpiece and one that can win championships. This is something that Mercedes will count on heavily, and now we need to remember what Wolf had to say regarding the looks of it prior to its presentation to the world. Wolf thought that it looked very similar to the W13, but in fact, it's a brand new version of it, and when talking about this matter, he had to say, it's full of surprises. The last time I saw it, I thought, oh, this looks the same as the W13. But here's hoping it's not the same. I'm pretty much like you. I go into the wind tunnel and it looks like this year's car, but they say to me it's very different underneath. It's about the airflow. It's about the weight distribution. It's about the aero map. Our car fundamentally changed mid-year. We changed the concept, but we couldn't see anything on the bodywork. So, what do we need to pay attention to when it comes to Mercedes? For starters, we need to really see whether the car will be 12 kilos lighter compared to the W13, and if this turns out to be the truth, then it may not necessarily be good news for Mercedes. Having a car that weighs 798 kilos would be the perfect thing for you, but if you go 5 kilos lower than that, the car may not perform where you like it. Remember, you have heavier tires, ones that require so much heat to be warmed up. And if your car misbehaves in the corners and acts weirdly in the straight-line sectors, it's definitely something that needs to be looked at closely. And yeah, we still have no idea who will be the number one driver on the team. Many expected Hamilton to take over as captain in 2022 after Mercedes released Bottas and decided it was finally time for Russell to join the team. But boy, was everyone wrong. The young Brit gained himself a very interesting nickname, Mr. Consistency, given the fact that he always finished in the top five when Hamilton struggled to score points in the first place. And now Hamilton is no longer in the leading position to sign an extension with Mercedes. To add salt to the wound, Russell said that Hamilton's claims of him being the guinea pig and doing experimental settings on the car so that the team can understand where they went wrong are not true at all, and both of the drivers enter the track with the same outfit. It was all up to them to choose what kind of setting they would choose to race with, so now it's no more Hamilton that's preferred by Mercedes, and in 2022 we've seen Russell make his own decisions as he did in Zandvoort where he called his own pit stop and finished P2, his career best at the time, prior to his win in Brazil. What will happen between the Mercedes drivers is definitely an interesting thing to pay attention to, and now that Mercedes have finally found the solution for their issues, we can proudly say, the Silver Arrows are back. This is something that was also added by Wolf, who, although he said that he doesn't expect to be at the forefront right away, has hinted earlier this year that they understand what caused the problems. And it's definitely a fix that can be implemented in the winter break. I think we have a much better understanding of what the problems were. We've been peeling only a layer of the onion, layers of discovering more issues and more problems. But I think we've come to the point that we understand pretty well why the car is not performing. The correlation at least is there for some tracks, so it's all in the fine detail of how can we make the car work out aerodynamically, how can we improve the ride and make it more fun. With that being said, what do you think is next for Mercedes in 2023? Let us know in the comments below.